You noticed the sentiment kind of turning a few weeks ago, that the narrative that we were looking a lot uh, more in surplus in 2022 than maybe some would have thought. Do you buy this narrative that we're seeing? No, I don't actually. I don't think 22 is going to be a surplus. And I think there's a huge amount of misconception around the 2022 balances. Part of that is because this year we are obviously drawing down inventories huge amounts, right? Like we are pretty much uh, back at the five year average globally. And in the OECD, we're back below the five year average, even the 2015 to 2019 average. Obviously, 2020 is inflated. So you, you take that out. And next year, balances are showing very small draws, maybe even flat. And I think that's what's giving people concern, oh, next year's balances are weak. But you can't draw inventories when there's nothing to draw. You can't have every year of stock draws because we are going to be entering next year at very tight inventory levels. And we will have very low OPEC plus spare capacity because they will be increasing production. So I think it's that what's causing the confusion that the number isn't showing a big draw. But I think people forget the fact or forgetting the fact that we will have we have already drawn down the overhang from last year and we continue to tighten the market. And Marita, do the market's overreacting to what is happening with the Delta variant, particularly in China, but to a certain extent in the United States as well? I think that's a valid question. I mean, is it overreacting given what happened last year? I think I, mean, I can see why there are fears. Uh, we've had lockdowns like this before, uh, even when things were looking good and then you get flare, flare ups. So I understand the concern. But for now, all the numbers that we are seeing, at least on the oil demand side uh, and talking to contacts within China as well, very clearly that, look, yes, there are localized lockdowns. Only 15 uh, areas or provinces have been uh, hard hit and or where lockdowns are really or restrictions rather are very severe. Uh, we're not looking at nationwide lockdowns. Uh, vaccination programs are very high. And, and in places that are very high, you're not seeing the um, impact on hospitals, mm -hmm. right? So this is different. Uh, yes, I understand why the market is concerned, but mm -hmm. we are very confident that like what happened in Jan, Feb this year, uh, this is not going to last for more than a couple of weeks and the government in China will be able to get this under control and we're going to get oil demand back up again. So, Emrita, and by the way, I'm going to say the word backwardation, but it's not my fault because Guy was the one who set up the segment, okay? So I'm going to say it. It's not my fault. Uh, if you look at backwardation, we've lost a lot of steam here. Uh, backwardation in theory uh, means that uh, prices are higher right now than they are in the future, which indicates a tighter market. Obviously, that's been drained as we highlight uh, these fundamental factors. What's the trade? How do you play your thesis with a narrowing backwardation? I think right now, given how sentiment is, I mean, you don't uh, catch a falling knife. So I would not uh, get in the way of this sell off. Um, we probably still have a little bit to go because this isn't just about oil. And, you know, the note we've published today, we do kind of talk about the fact that this is not just oil market fundamentals. This is wider issues, particularly U.S. Treasury yields. A lot of people expected a steepening of the U.S. Treasury yield and position for that. And as a hedge, they also had bought oil. That entire trade is unraveling, right? So not get in the way of that. Once the positioning is even cleaner, it's already most long positions are already out. But once that's been cleaned up, then I think you start to position for the upside for later on this year. So a deck 21 or even a deck 22 would be those kind of um, whether it's the backwardation there. So you'd play the 21, 22 uh, spread or just the flat price as well, because, again, the sell off here after this route is over uh, is going to make the market look very attractive, uh, longer dated futures in particular. Just again for context, it is Alex's favourite word. She used it three times in one question for you there, Amory. For you, Guy. Um, Just for you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the dollar. We're talking to Kit Jukes from Sockgen a little bit earlier on. We were talking to him. He says uh, you could get euro dollar 116, you could get down to 115. The dollar's on the front foot right now, given the data and the spread difference we're going to see across the Atlantic. Again, how is that going to change pricing dynamics? Well, that's, again, partly playing out via the treasuries, right? Like, effectively, we've seen the move in the treasuries and therefore we've seen the move in the dollar. And, you know, look, a strengthening dollar is headwinds for, uh, for the market. It's not the main driver, for sure, but it doesn't help, particularly at times like this, when everything is selling off anyways, right? So, I, I mean, I'm with, uh, I'm with Alex, by the way. I love backwardation, too. But I, I do think where the dollar kind of comes in is much more on the flat price side, right? And the 
pressure you've seen that is much more a dollar uh, kind of dollar play as well. I don't think the spreads are being affected by this, but yes, there will be a lot of pressure on the market, um, particularly on flat price, more so than spreads, given what's going on in the broader macro uh, backdrop and, and particularly the US dollar. See, all the cool kids like backwardation. Uh, so Amrita, when you take a look yeah. at data points, what's it going to be? Is it going to be imports or is it going to be stock draws? And in which region, like what's the most important number of those two that you're looking at going forward? The tricky bit right now is that the stock draws that we're seeing are all in China, right? And data isn't very opaque there, and that's the problem. Whereas what we need to see to get the market back in confidence possibly is more OECD draws. But then again, the U.S. is drawing. And, and we haven't talked about uh, refining margins, the other uh, the factor that cool kids love to talk about. Margins are actually <laughs> starting to look a lot better right now after probably two years. So that is a sign that demand actually is picking up. So there are those kind of green shoots. And I think once the market focuses on that, I think that's when so I would say refining margins and stock draws would be the two key ones which we'd be uh, highlighting. <laughs>